Do you know someone who is using opioids for chronic pain? And you wonder, is it possible to reduce the opioid dose without making their pain worse? Today, I'll tell you about a large multi-center randomized controlled trial of 608 people conducted in the United Kingdom. I was a co-investigator in the research team in this trial, and the results are extraordinary. The randomized trial, Improving the Well-Being of People with Opioid-Treated Chronic Pain, also known as iWatch, was just published in JAMA, the Journal of the American Medical Association. So, let's talk about opioid tapering today. Opioids are potent painkillers, no doubt about that. They act in the brain, the spinal cord, and in the peripheral nerves, blocking the pain signals. They are very helpful when the person needs surgery or a procedure like colonoscopy or an orthopedic surgeon needs to reduce a fracture. But for people with chronic, ongoing pain, it is tricky. By chronic pain, I mean pain that has gone on for more than three months. There are some kinds of chronic pain that may need ongoing opioid therapy, but the problem is that the body develops tolerance and the person needs higher doses to achieve the same benefits. It doesn't take too long to develop tolerance, and within a few months, the person may be taking high doses of opioids, but the pain is not gone. The person is still has pain. So, how come that the person is now taking a higher dose of opioids, which would be 5, 10, 50 times higher than what we would give to someone having surgery, and they still are in pain? There are many explanations for this. One of them is opioid-induced hyperalgesia, a phenomenon that happens when the person takes opioids every day at high doses, and the opioid is now causing changes in the pain system in the synapses and pain transmissions, therefore perpetuating the pain. So a group of researchers in the UK, led by Professor Harbinder Sandhu of the University of Warwick, set up to answer this question. In people who are receiving opioids for chronic pain, is it possible to reduce the dose without making the pain worse? without impairing their quality of life, and they invited me to be a co-investigator in this trial. This trial was funded by the National Institute for Health Research, NIHR, in the United Kingdom, and it was conducted at the University of Warwick. This was a publicly funded study instead of a study page by drug companies. This is one of the largest multi-center randomized trial of opioid tapering to date. 608 people were recruited from general family physicians for whom they were prescribing strong opioids on multiple occasions. People who heard about the study could also self-refer to participate in the study. So, Nobody was forced to taper their opioid dose. The patients who volunteered to the study were told that there was no expectation that they would have to taper and did not have to commit to tapering at the time of consent. People were randomized to one of two groups. This means that they had a 50-50 chance of getting either the control group, which was a form of enhanced usual care, or the iWatch intervention. Both groups received a copy of my book, the My Opioid Manager, and a relaxation CD. iWatch stands for Improving the Well-Being of People on Opioid-Treated Chronic Pain. You can visit the trial website here. iWatch consists of the following. Three days of a full-day group meeting held once weekly, led by a trained nurse and by a layperson with chronic non-cancer pain and experience of opioid tapering. This input from a layperson was highly valued. The topics discussed in group included education about opioids and how to taper, also skills for self-management of pain, and participants were exposed to case studies illustrating successful opioid tapering 
and the challenges they faced. In addition, participants had an individual one-hour consultation with the nurse, which was based on motivational interviewing techniques, plus two telephone calls of 30 minutes each and a further one hour long in-person consultation. The nurses used a tapering app specifically designed for this trial that computed a standard tapering plan. The tapering plan consisted of a reduction of 10% of the baseline opioid dose per week until 30% of the baseline dose was reached, then a reduction of 10% of the remaining dose per week. So, for example, a person who was starting at 100 mg of morphine equivalent per day would decrease the daily dose once a week as follows. Week zero, they were taking 100 mg of morphine equivalent per day, and this could be divided into two doses per day, let's say 50 mg in the morning and 50 mg in the evening. So then the first reduction, they take a total of 90 mg of morphine per day. That is a 10% reduction. Then the second week, their total daily dose will be 80 mg of morphine per day. Then 70, 60, 50, 40, 30. At this point, which is 30% of the baseline dose, we recalculate the 10%. So 10% of 30 is 3. But since we don't have tablets of 3 mg, we round up to 5 mg. So the next dose reduction will be 25 mg per day, and the next week they take 20 mg per day, then 15, 10, 5, and keep going until they are not taking any opioids, or they reach a point where they do not tolerate any reduction in the daily dose. The tapering program was individualized according to the opioid preparation and individual circumstances. Part of the iWatch intervention was also an education DVD that they could watch at home with relaxation, mindfulness, and distraction techniques. The total time for the iWatch intervention was 17 hours over a 8 to 10 week period. What did we measure? The two primary outcomes of the study were pain interference with activities of daily living, and reduction of opioid use over the previous four weeks at the 12 months follow-up, which was the primary endpoint. Secondary outcomes included pain intensity, severity of opioid withdrawal symptoms, health-related quality of life, sleep quality, emotional well-being, and proportion of patients who reduced opioids by 50% from baseline. How many people showed interest in participating? The team approached 20,900 people from 191 general practices in the UK. Then, 2,220 potential participants expressed an interest in the study. In addition, nine people heard about the study and contacted the office. Of all of these people, 1,541 people were reached by telephone and assessed to see if they were eligible to participate. Of this, 608 were eligible and were randomized to one of the two groups. The mean age was 61 years, 60% were female, and 97% were white ethnicity. There were 35 groups interventions delivered at 25 community locations, such as church halls or community centers. The adherence to the protocol was 83%, which means they adhere to the course manual and all the steps outlined in the manual. What were the results? We had data at 12 months for 72% of the participants for the interference with activities of daily living, and 71% for the opioid use data. At 12 months, both groups improved slightly their pain interference with activities of daily living, but there was no significant difference between usual care and the iWatch group. However, 29% of people in the iWatch group had discontinued taking opioids completely while only 7% of the people randomized to usual care were able to discontinue taking opioids. 
and the difference between the two groups was significant. At 12 months, 57% in the iWatch group and 27% in the usual care group had reduced their daily opioids by 50% from baseline. This means that about one in three people who attended the iWatch intervention reduced their opioid by at least 50%, who would not have managed this without attending the program. And that between one in four and one in five more people will have stopped opioids completely after one year. Importantly, stopping opioids did not increase people's pain or how pain interfered with their lives. Of all 11 secondary outcomes, six were significantly improved in the iWatch intervention. There were no significant differences in pain intensity, opioid withdrawal symptoms and sleep quality at any time point between the iWatch and usual care groups. You can find this trial publication on the JAMA website. So what are the conclusions of this trial? We concluded that a group-based educational intervention that consisted of group and individual support as well as skills-based learning significantly reduce patient-reported use of opioids compared to usual care. But here was no effect on perceived pain interference with daily life activities at 12 months follow-up. Please remember that this video is not intended to provide medical advice. It is for educational purposes only. If you have a condition that is causing chronic pain, Please talk to your doctor to get an individualized plan for you. If there is an emergency, please call an ambulance or go to the nearest emergency department. If you know someone who is interested in tapering opioids, send this video to them. There is a share button here. And here are other videos from my channel that you can watch. See you next time.